first speaker, and that will be Matt Palahunty for a five minute opening statement. How's everybody doing? Everybody good? Yeah. Did we divide up? Did we sit like at a wedding where the people on this side? <laughs> uh, uh, this, the, the question that, that's put for us today, this good without God question mark, it's kind of baffling. It's one of the things that when we're talking about possibly having debates, it's picking a subject. And this is a question that to me makes no sense at all. I mean, if you begin with uh, Psalm 14.1, the fool, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, they are corrupt, their works are vile, they can do no good. So there's at least one passage in the Bible that specifically says that because I don't believe in a God, because I actually believe that there are no gods, I can do nothing good. Um, does anybody actually think that that's true, that I can do no good? You, you think, okay, cool. Um, there are plenty of people who don't have a God belief, who do good things. Marie Curie. Uh, Warren Buffett, you know, you're talking about philanthropists and people doing just generally good things, but we have an atheist helping the homeless group in the in Austin area. But more important than that, in figuring out, oh, you did something special, um, I do plenty of things myself that I would just generally consider good, like loving my family and helping other people and working to make the world, at least as far as I can tell, a better place. Um, I'd like to think that the psalmist was engaging in a little hyperbole, kind of like a we rock, you suck type thing, uh, to kind of amp up his own group. Uh, but you've got this, this idea that sticks with people. And in Matthew 7, you've got Jesus talking about how you'll, you know, by their fruits will you know them, and a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, bad tree cannot bear good fruit, etc., which kind of reinforces this idea. Um, it's an idea that we know is wrong about fruit trees, and we also know that it's wrong about human beings. Um, we know people of all beliefs can do good, and we know people of all beliefs can do bad. And I, I would point you to the uh, pedophile priest scandals, amongst other things, to show that people who generally profess a belief, I cannot possibly assess whether or not they are true believers. That's not my job. I don't get to determine who's a true Christian and who isn't. I didn't even get to do it when I was a Christian for 25 years. It's, it's, not, it's not my job. If there is a God, it's his. Um, and it would be silly of me to try and sort all that out. But <coughs> This idea that we can't be good without God is one that I, that I almost think doesn't even need to be addressed anymore. Uh, but because it's on there today, I wanted to at least make sure that we talked about it a little bit. The, uh, the question, there's a number of challenges that, that are often raised to secular moral positions. Um, one of them is that, you know, well, you simply can't be good without God, uh, which I think we can pretty much demonstrate is, is not true unless we have some really weird definition of good. And then we move on to things like, well, you're only good because God wrote it in your heart, or you're only good because you are surrounded by morally good Christians who guide you. Um, those, those are some of the more common ones. And so my question kind of is, is Christianity, and you'll forgive my focus on Christianity, I think it's predominant in, in the room, in the area, um, there are the broader arguments applied to other religions as well. Uh, moral? And my answer is no. Uh, Christianity doesn't have within it a moral system. And that baffles people when I say that. But it's true. It has a legal system that addresses subjects of morality. The Euthyphro dilemma raised in ancient times by the Greeks was, is something moral, I'm paraphrasing obviously, is something moral because God commands it, or does God command it because it's moral? If something is moral because God commands it, then morality is nothing other than divine declaration and fiat and can change on a whim. And if God is the author of morality and whatever he speaks is necessarily moral, then telling you to slaughter someone is necessarily moral. If it's the other way around, that God merely tells you things that are already intrinsically moral, then what use do we have for God? Clearly we can discover things that are intrinsically morally good on our own. We do it all the time. So you don't actually have what I would consider to be a moral system. What you have is a list of laws or a, a, a set of commands that seemingly do not change. There are a number of, of uh, apologetic responses to this, and, and I don't know if, if Mark's going to address any of them or not. But the question is, is it more accurate, the, the, the laws that Christianity has about morality, is it more accurate, is it more moral, than those that we can come up with from a secular perspective? And again, the answer is no. 
if we began with the Bible, as I would think most Christians do, the Bible clearly is not a moral guidebook. Um, you, you may, whether you think it was uh, literally, you should take it literally that it was inspired directly by God and everything in there is a moral precept, I think that idea fails as soon as we mentioned slavery. Um, or if you think it's just a, the best wisdom of the men of their times who were trying to understand God, I think it still fails because you can't get anything out of it. You cannot, you have no authority other than the individual interpretation. And it's the reason why you have thousands of denominations within Christianity. Oh, I'm at the stopping point. Um, just a couple more sentences. I, I will wrap it up then. Um, Second moral, moral systems have an advantage in that they have a way to deal with this problem of conflict. That religion, that's a challenge that religions often put, say that, that secular morality can't solve. And in fact, secular morality systems are the only ones that can. Okay, thank you very much. We will now have a five minute opening statement from Mark Allison of the Covenant Connections Church. Appreciate you all being here, and, and uh, thank you. Big y'all for letting me be here. I hope that's the hardest thing I have to do tonight is pronounce your name. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is this is an honor and a privilege, um, especially being able to uh, uh, talk alongside Matt. Um, I was I don't know if any of you all have ever seen any of his YouTube videos that are out there. Um, they're they're interesting. And uh, I was watching the best of, and um, uh, that's especially good. And uh, there was there was one, uh, you know, he'll get these Christian callers that just get so frustrated and, and don't know how to articulate what, what they want to say. And one guy, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, said something like, uh, "I'm going to come over and punch you in the head in Jesus' name." <laughs> <laughs> so I figure I'll keep that as my low standard for what I want to achieve tonight. I hope y'all get that. Uh, and yeah. We'll see. Um, it's good. So, uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I, uh, um, I, I'm very surprised that more people won't come out and, and discuss Christianity with people that have uh, opposing views. I mean, if Christianity is true, and, and it, I believe it is, um, then they should be able to stand up to, to that kind of debate. And we'll see if, if I can articulate those kind of ideas uh, tonight. Um, I think, uh, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about myself in general. Um, I grew up in the Middle East where my parents were missionaries. Um, I was in, we were in Jordan for a little while, a little village out in, a, in the desert, and fighting started and we evacuated to Beirut, which didn't turn out to be a lot better. Um, this was in the, in the seven, early 70s, uh, so they evacuated all the Americans out of Beirut. Ended up uh, being uh, growing up on a college campus in North Georgia at Toko Falls College. So. I almost had no chance other than to end up being a Christian, right? So I was probably born a Christian, just, a, just kidding. <laughs> can't get here that way. Um, but uh, interestingly, when I got to Tacoma, my the first guy I met, his name was David. We're, we're good friends. And uh, David's dad was the head of the Bible and theology department. My dad, the head of the missions department. And um, David's been an atheist his whole life and still is an atheist. Um, so you can... Be the son of a Bible theology professor, and it still works out that way. Um, but uh, you know, David's a great guy, so I know from personal experience that atheists can be good, and um, uh, and we have some good discussions very often. So, just want to attach on to what Matt was talking about um, when when Psalm is talking about the fool, and his heart says it says there's no God. Um, you know, it's it's saying that in the context of, of the Israelite culture. And so he's talking to Israelites when he's, when he's saying, talking about the difference between people that are foolish and people that are wise, not necessarily categorizing atheists in, in that kind of light. Um, and as far as uh, Christianity not being a moral system um, and it just being a list of laws, I was, uh, my students are, uh, one class of them are going through the Old Testament and um, they get through Genesis and you know there's some great stories in there. Exodus, good, good stories too. You get into Leviticus and you, you agree with Matt 100%. Um, all it is is a list of laws. And, and I, I don't know, has anybody here ever tried to read through the Bible in a year before? I've gotten through Deuteronomy like so many times and it ended there. I mean, did not get past. I got through one of those other things where you start in the New Testament or something. Because, um, there's a bunch of laws. But um, uh, one of my, my main ideas about how uh, 
uh, well, let, me, let me continue on because it gives some context. My uh, master's degree is in anthropology from the University of Georgia, go dogs. And uh, that, uh, this is a great university here too. You got a part of it, right? So, so I guess that all works. Um, but uh, uh, you know, when God, uh, when God had to deal with a bunch of, he had to get a bunch of, of slaves that had been slaves for 400 years, and he had to get them out of there, out of Egypt, into another land that uh, was full of um, atheists. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they were they were actually theists, and that's where some of the names for God actually even came from. El and so forth. The Canaanite name. So he's trying to get these people that have been atheists, or I'm sorry, that have been in Egypt for 400 years, didn't know anything about God except for what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had told them. And and so he's he's trying to teach them what it means to be holy and moral moral people. And so these laws were given in order to do that. So um, uh, and that's all I have time to talk about. So, but when you ask me 